Hello. Hello. Can you start by uh, introducing yourself? Yeah, I'm Anna Halesko. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Christian Kvela. Okay. I'm French. And I'm from Sweden. Okay. And We're working as a duo since uh, 2001, two, mm -hmm. around yeah, that. Three. And uh, we are together, we artists in the first time, in the first place. And uh, but we also publisher, and uh, we run like a, a space, uh, which is like a modulable place, place where, uh, which is an extension of our work basically. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, correct. So our praxis, uh, the center of our praxis is like a screen printing. We do unique works. Uh, in the form of like more or less like painting, mm -hmm. so we print on uh, wood panels, on uh, canvas, and so on, like from uh, small to very large in situ works, and uh, we do a lot of unique books. I mean, uh, uh, like bigger size, like monotype, that kind of uh, books and uh, editions. Can you explain a bit for people who don't know silk screen, how do you make a unique silk screen? Because it's a printing process that is meant to make several copies. So how do you transform it to make unique copies? Uh, over the years, we were doing like editions and slowly our interest shifted into the, uh, the accidents of the printing process. And for the last three, four years, yeah, three, four years, uh, all our practice is based on misprinting, this misprinting experimenting. Uh, experimenting and deconstructing the, the seal screen process. Mm -hmm. uh, now where we are is like basically we just use the screen the way, uh, way, the way a, a painter would use um, brush. a brush. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So there isn't necessarily a film. Sometimes you just take the screen and put some ink and with a, a piece of tape and uh... yeah. yeah. So before we were interrupted by the postman, I, I was asking you about the the printing process. So the I think that often in your recent work you don't use a film like the regular uh, silk screen process. Uh, no, we're completely experimenting. I mean, uh, I mean, we like, use film too, but not so much actually anymore. Not always. I mean, uh, it's just like if we need, we would use something. Mm -hmm. But we also work with like uh, with paper, tape, stencils. Mm, yeah, uh, I guess because we think like film is like so it takes a long time. You know, you have mm -hmm. to print it out. Actually, you have to light the screen. It's like too much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, preparing and when you have an idea you want to then it's like faster to just cut in some tape and mask some things on the screen it's way more alive by printing otherwise it's very structured and you have to follow every step in a way mm -hmm. so but we use we use screens too I mean films too so mm -hmm. it's not a, a rule yeah, and so this experimentation is the result of a very long process of uh, editing uh, and, and publishing with a silk screen. I think you started with uh, Bongu Press? Yeah, I started uh, in 95 mm -hmm. with Bongu okay. and uh, over the years, I don't know, I think we published uh, probably about three, four hundred uh, like books, zines, artist books in uh, screen print. Uh, and was it in Berlin already? It was uh, in Strasbourg, mm -hmm. in France, then we moved together in Bordeaux, mm -hmm. and uh, then here in Berlin. And uh, so we did a lot of collabs, we, we published, we produced, and um, we, over the year we kind of mastered the screen print technique, like the proper way to do it, and uh, it was not challenging anymore. You know, we could print like six, seven colors with like uh, registration and everything. Perfect. <laughs> well, yeah, so it, we, we had to find a, slowly we started to experiment and find a, a new way to, uh, to rethink the whole process. Mm -hmm. And so what, what kind of uh, material was in, on, in this uh, Bongo Press uh, 
Is it in an artist book? Uh, Drawings or? Um, it was somewhere in between like uh, illustration, drawing, contemporary art and uh, it was very very much punk mm -hmm. influence and uh, subversive. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like, uh, yeah, like very... Was a lot about music or something? Like yeah, it was a lot like, 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 yeah, like, very much linked to experimental noise, punk. Angry mm. people. <laughs> <laughs> anger, yeah, a lot of anger, and uh, yeah, that's how I started. Yeah, self screen is a good medium to express uh, yeah. anger. I yeah, mean, you, you can yeah. have uh, tons of colors <laughs> and, and very raw uh, yeah. results, and, uh, and it's uh, like a workout. Mm. So oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, it's not with a print actually, it's not so easy. Mm. And and then you moved to Berlin, and that's when you founded uh, the Resurgo. Uh, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it came way later than Resurgo. Yeah. I mean, we five just, years, I think we changed for four years. Yeah, we just changed name because we wanted to close a chapter after mm -hmm. 17 years of using that name, and it was like uh, we were a little bit tired of carrying the that. In the heritage, like mm -hmm. of 17 years, and people were too much expecting. I don't know. Or we, it, it was just like it was like yeah. it was good to close a chapter mm -hmm. and start something new. Basically, we just doing the same or the continuity, mm -hmm. but we might change name again. Is it why it's called the Resurco? Because it's something new that is rising. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah. Like but it's the same kind of. Doing the same and uh, but different or continuity mm -hmm. as a kind of like a spiral mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Okay. And so why is the shop called Insoco then? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We actually don't really use that name, but uh... it just to confuse people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, we always try to uh, to make things complicated. Yeah. <laughs> When in the end, it's very simple. Yeah. yeah. Normally, I mean, the press is called Resargo. What we're publishing with our books and things from other people is Resargo, and then the shop. Since the shop is not a press, it's a shop, mm -hmm. so we call it InSarg with them. Mm -hmm. And then our work we do under our own names. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's but confusing maybe, but yeah, it's, it's not so important. It's not so in important. That. I mean, uh, I had the idea of changing uh, every week, having a new name. <laughs> you know, it just. It, uh, it opens some doors if you think like this. You know, you're not stuck in your own, uh, in your routine, so why not? Yeah, that's how the. So this space uh, changed over the years, and you experimented different formats. Yeah, I mean it's uh, now it's more or less like a artist book zine shop, like prints and so on. But uh, we use the space as an exhibition room, uh, studio. Like uh, it, we had like concert in the room. We had like uh, experimental cinema evenings, or it just like you know. They, of course, there's like some uh, economical issues, so you, we have to pay the rent. So we have this one part of it that have to be like a economical viable. But uh, once this is uh, is done, the rest we free to to have fun and try out things. Yeah, so it it may change function. Yeah, definitely. When when you have another project and yeah, and also yeah, if uh, if we if we feel like we we say what we had to say or show mm -hmm. what we had to show and uh, or, or get bored, mm -hmm. we might change here. Yeah. We're changing here a lot actually. Yeah. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's more. more. <laughs> Sometimes it's, yeah. Depends what we have to do. If we have a lot of things, then we prefer to have less around us. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we can really see how the shop kind of going over. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about the shop and how it changes depending on your mood and everything. And I wanted to ask you about um, the selection that you made. So I guess those are friends and people who work uh, maybe in the same direction as you. Yeah, we try to yeah. see it as a curated object. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it has to... The center of it is our praxis, is our work. And then uh, so... We would invite our friends or like uh, peers or people we feel affinity with or things we want to give uh, uh, some visibility. So of course we don't go in with the mainstream art book or this kind of thing. It's not very interesting and they already 
when and therefore presented. So yeah, and we try not to close ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, to keep it open. To so it is a, a part. I mean. Um, we don't have any section in the shop, it's all mixed, you have to take the time to discover by yourself and you go from uh, contemporary art to illustration, from uh, graphic novel to zines to uh, more conceptual reading or interview to a magazine, but uh, I think the whole, the whole idea makes sense together. Mm -hmm. And do you recognize yourself in the term grafzine? I know that maybe Bongo was closer to, to that aesthetic. Is it something that you, you consider relevant for me? Mm. Yeah, I think we're still doing some kind of grafzine, but maybe it's more... I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends. We do a lot of different ones. I mean, different mm -hmm. projects. So mm -hmm. some are maybe more grafzines, but then... Um, I don't know how you can call it really. I'm not sure. So I think we're doing uh, probably something in between. Yes, in between. Zine, graph, zine, and artist books. Mm -hmm. Part of our production is art. I mean, if you, of course, if a book goes in an institution and it costs like, a, you know, like a certain amount of money, uh, it's hard to call it a graph, zine, or a mm -hmm. zine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an artist book probably. I don't know if it's the price that uh, <laughs> that. Jim, the, that decide what, <laughs> what the object is, but uh, if something costs five euro, mm -hmm. it's a bit uh, pretentious to call it an uh, artist book. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we navigate in between. Mm -hmm. like. And can you tell us about the artist that you uh, publish? Um, talk about a couple of projects that you do, maybe? I mean, now we don't publish so much from other artists, but we mm -hmm. do those mini scenes, but we will be it's 66 so far, 66 different projects. Mini uh, So those mini is really from, I mean, art students. Established uh, artists, friends. Yes, it's very mixed. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's the, um, the publication yeah. where you publish other people. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of what we mostly do nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the idea, this like, uh, 16 pages, it's a little booklet, each mm -hmm. one is printed in a different color so when you have them back, it, it, it goes like a Pantone uh, uh, color uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I mean people submit black and white images, we ask people if they want to participate, they submit black and white images and Nana and I, we do the printing and the, mm -hmm. and the coloring with sometimes with the help of our mm -hmm. interns and. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's also there's like illustration, photo, text, poetry. It's all kind of styles. Yeah. But since it goes all in the same format, and we're always kind of printing on the same paper and using, I mean, we try to fit the color schedule kind of, but they all fit very good together, even if it's totally different styles inside. It's kind of yeah, the ambition like a, is to, to publish like a few hundred. It would give a good. Uh, a good view on the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's 125 of each? Yeah, yeah. each time. And so we so don't reprint them. It's a yeah. low run. Also. It's more like for fun to just be able to publish, mm -hmm. you know, to get all things what you like. In it. mm -hmm. And it's not so... Um, I mean, it don't take so long, much time to do it. Otherwise, when we do bigger artist books with other, other artists, it takes a very long time to produce a system mm -hmm. book with five colors, 150 edition, and it's like 60 pages inside. It's like two two months project mm -hmm. each time. So it's like sometimes we do that too, but it's yeah. It's and different. it keeps us uh, linked to where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is exactly how yes, how I started for 20 years ago, and uh, 20 year, 21 year after, we're still doing small zines for five euro. But it's important. I think it's yeah, really I think important. it's important to keep it real yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. and it's important for, that, for us too, it's just like keeps the balance. Mm -hmm. And can you... Why did you move to, to Berlin? How, can, how do you... What so, dro drove you to this city? Certainly not because of the weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I grew up here, okay. and uh, we met here, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, yeah. I just moved here to have a break from Sweden. I was not supposed to stay 
Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, then I met Christian. I always stay here. I don't know, it's like uh, <laughs> we never really thought about moving here. It was not planned. It just happened to. Yeah, because you were working we were, and, yeah. and doing stuff and never left. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we left after to Bordeaux for one and a half year, but Bordeaux, I mean, it's, it's a nice city, but it's very small and you're very, mm -hmm. how do you say? away from everything, you mm -hmm. know, it's not close to any other, I mean, Berlin is also not very close And it's a good base to come back, you know, we travel a lot, so it's, it, you have a lot of space here and it's a, it's, it's a big village where mm -hmm. you can concentrate on your own thing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a relaxed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we, yeah, are we going to stay here, I guess? Yes, <laughs> you're not planning on going anywhere else. No. <laughs> yeah, all the time actually. All the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially in the winter. We should move to Texas. <laughs> we always think you should move somewhere where it's warm and sun. But... Mm -hmm. So that's what you tried when you go, went to Bordeaux to go for the sun. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, honestly, yeah, it and was it was too water. much sun for us. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it was too warm. Way too warm. And did you also stay here because of the artist community and uh, everything that is happening? Yeah, here? of course. I mean, uh, we love to go to, you know, it's more like the concerts, I guess, concerts. Was attracted us more. It's like so much band stopping by Berlin, and it's mm -hmm. really the music scene as well. That's what attracted us for from the beginning. Yeah, from 15 years ago. But now, for like, a, I mean, now I wouldn't leave Berlin because of the art scene, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because uh, yeah, we love to see exhibition, and there's like so much going on, mm -hmm. like gallery exhibition, museum, project rooms, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's feeding our work also. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you the energy also to continue. And has it changed a lot? It seemed like the real estate prices went up and that it's harder for artists to, to find space and... Uh... Everything got more professional, mm. which is a good thing and a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's less fun, but uh, it generates a career and, uh, mm -hmm. and... I mean, before it was like everyone could open a cafe, everybody, everyone could have a, have a concert, look. I mean, it was oh everyone could do whatever they wanted, but it was not necessarily good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's now really it's more selective. like selective, which is maybe not. I mean, okay, you're losing this energy then in a way, but I guess you see way more. You're good eating things. way better food now, and you're seeing way better, <laughs> better <art> stuff. Also. <laughs> but it's <laughs> less fun. But and oh, more expensive, maybe. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I don't know if it's less fun. I mean, it depends on mm -hmm. how you use these things. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's way more yeah professional. Way. Before you could go to a concert, and the concert would not like even start, and nobody would care, you know, because <laughs> people for something it didn't work. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Even if you pay the entry, which was like probably just five euros, but it was more like this mm -hmm. back then. So laid back. Yeah, it was very laid back. But it was a lot of things. I mean, I miss the old, old time sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it changed so much. This neighborhood changed. We're here in Mitte, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, you told me that it used to be the gallery uh, neighborhood. Yeah, it used to be like the uh, gallery hotspot. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2009, after the crisis, like a lot of like uh, American galleries were dependent in uh, an extension here closed. Uh, a lot of European gallery closed too. And. Uh, but I'm wondering if it was about the... There's that part, there's also like the, the, the rents are getting higher and higher, so everybody moved to, I mean everybody, a lot moved to a new location, like on the Potsdamer Platz or... Mm. But it's still uh, quite a few, I mean there's some uh, pretty good institution also here. But I think it was more before move. all the galleries had like a second space here in Berlin, mm. it was more like, because Berlin is or was really cool in this art mm. way, but then they discovered that there's nobody here buying. <laughs> there's no market here. <laughs> no yeah, money, you know, you still have, even if the rent is cheap, but you still have to pay two, three people working, and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's still maybe like it's okay a... for five years, but then and there's still no market going on here. You don't sell anything. Then. You know, the last art fair 
I mean, obviously, like, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be reconducted next year, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. but that's it's a long, like long that. story of, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really everybody that's wants to make <laughs> art, but nobody buys it. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, you don't have. A it's a good place to produce, yeah. but uh, you're not selling anything. You have too many artists here. You know? Yeah. Like, artists are not buying art. I mean, maybe if they're super famous or rich. I, I have one last question. I was looking at the, the two prints that are behind you and, and they're very precise and yet completely uh, random. And so in order to have like terrific ones like those ones, do you, are there a lot of them that goes to the trash because of in, while experimenting, it takes a while to get what you, you're looking for? Uh, the one behind are editions. So mm -hmm. they're like, uh, okay. it's a uh, part of our work that is a bit more graphic design, less loose, mm -hmm. more, okay. more planned. Uh, planned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now uh, we experiment a lot, mm -hmm. but then you know with silk screen you can always add a layer okay. or mm -hmm. print everything white mm -hmm. and just keep some parts and build on and you know construct from that. So it's mm -hmm. we never really throw anything. Okay. Goes, uh, yeah, it's the idea of uh, with your group, like recycling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this. Yeah, but for this, I guess it's like yeah, if they're bad printed, we would take it out. Like, yeah, if or, those are bad printed, because it's supposed out. to be addition, but they're all different. It's a split contain, mm -hmm. so for example, it's like no painterly marks. Mm -hmm. For example, this one has a mark here. Probably mm -hmm. the rest on one, maybe not all of them. Are. Yeah, and of course you're interested into. Uh, in perfection, yeah, so, yeah. Not yeah. so we allow. Our I mean, we're not trying to do computer prints. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like if the print have like a you know like a, a little glitch or something. I mean, yeah, it's dust, part of it. Or dust spot or we left it because it's just there's no dust spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah.